the struggle to lose weight stops right at that moment where there seems to be a shift that happens. Everything just seems to come into place. Let me ask you, where do you think weight loss starts? In the kitchen, at the gym, or inwardly? I firmly believe and I have benefited from understanding and honoring the brain to gut connection and some powerful mindset shifts that honor that connection, putting an end to the struggle to lose unwanted weight. That's what I want to share with you today. I'm a licensed clinical social worker with a passion to help women eat, move, and live a life of mental and physical wellness. The way you and I digest our meals and life experiences, such as heartbreak, trauma, or celebrations, can leave us feeling tired, angry, negative, or over-consuming life and food. Or it can leave us feeling light, joyful, and interacting with life and ourselves in a kind and loving way, where our bodies naturally gravitate towards our innate, our natural body weight. You may be surprised to learn that our gut has its own nervous system. Certain tastes reveal and link how we feel in our gut, producing pleasant hormones like serotonin, dopamine, ghrelin, or insulin. Sweet tastes, for example, are linked to feelings of contentment, but too much sweetness might lead to feelings of greed or idleness. The sour flavor is both comforting and relaxing when it's consumed too much, like too much wine, too many berries, or pickles. You may actually find yourself feeling envious or having way more of a negative view about things. I guess that's why perhaps the gut is referred to as our second brain. When we eat ultra processed foods on a regular basis, we are inadvertently confusing our stomachs, making it difficult to absorb and break down food into useful physical and mental energy. Over time, we begin experiencing a disconnection between our body and our mind, noticing an increase in symptoms like bloating, indigestion, constipation, and weight gain, or sometimes even struggling mentally with things like anxiety and low mood. I used to eat a five pound bag of gummy bears every day and I couldn't even remember eating or even liking them most of the time. You know, with all of the stomach issues and weight gain, I didn't even stop to ask myself what was pushing me to eat those sugary bears Ooh, in such large numbers. I didn't realize how my brain and stomach communicated. If I had, maybe, just maybe, I might have acted on the advice I offered here sooner instead of unconsciously struggling with overeating tendencies. Ignoring the interaction between our brain and our gut, it sets us up for a never-ending battle to lose weight and keep it off. A healthy perspective could help us set up and sustain our motivation, raise our confidence and commitment to our health, shape our actions and goals, develop new healthy habits, and strengthen our ability to deal with the pressures and obstacles that will inevitably arise just from living life. Everything we consume has an impact on our thinking, which in turn has an impact on how we relate to ourselves and food. Picture your brain and gut saying, Miss Seeley, me and you, us never part. So let's dive into those powerful mindsets, I promise you. When was the last time you looked in a mirror or walked past the store and caught a glimpse of yourself and did not immediately notice a flaw? Am I hearing crickets? We are the biggest critic of ourselves. Even on a good day when all of the stars align and I'm not bloated and everything stands up straight and lays flat, it takes a lot of mental restraint for me not to berate myself. It is all too easy to tell ourselves things like, this will never work. It's too difficult to lose weight. My metabolism stinks. Or the only way I will lose weight is to stick to a strict diet. All the while, never realizing the impact our words and thoughts have on our gut function or lack thereof and our struggle to lose excess weight is nothing more than our mind playing tricks on us. Fact. Positive self-talk, it's a game changer. The more you talk to yourself with kindness, compassion, with words like, I am in control. My body is doing its best. I'm thankful for the messages my body sends me. The less likely you will view yourself from a place of disgust or embarrassment or depression. It is going to happen. There will be a glitch along our road no matter how hard we attempt to plan for it or cast a wish, throwing salt over our shoulders for good measure. Something will come up that will make it particularly hard to stick to our best laid out plans. Whether it be a work commitment that ran long, sickness, or even something enjoyable like taking a vacation. When those things happen, we have two options. Option one, admit defeat and give up. Or option B, design a plan B in which we are not the victims of our circumstances. We can investigate what happened, what caused the shift, then discuss the best strategy to get back on track. Drink a gallon of water every day. Eat five small meals. Walk 10,000 steps. Perform an hour of strength training. Do a HIIT workout. Track your protein, fat, and carbs. Do yoga. Eat five or six servings of vegetables and get nine hours of sleep every night. Whew. 
boy, that's a lot. And I'm tired just saying it. Envision trying to fit all that perfectly into each day. Once I remembered that health and weight loss and weight maintenance are an ongoing process, the quest for that kind of perfection came to a screeching halt. And weight loss at that point felt seamless. Focus on being incrementally consistent, establishing doable, easy to repeat health habits, and avoid doing a complete overhaul on Monday. Successful companies know when and are not afraid to try new and different things. They stay flexible. Lack of flexibility. Having an all or nothing mindset, which means seeing some foods as all good or all bad, or having an unwillingness to try different styles of eating, exercises, or lifestyle routine, that's not being flexible, and it invites boredom and stalled motivation. I've discovered that something as simple as switching up where I exercise or putting fresh cut flowers on the table where I eat can help me lean towards having a flexible mindset. It's fine and even ideal to go back and change what you're doing based on progress and lifestyle situations. Try new dishes a few times a month, a new fitness routine every six weeks to maintain flexibility along the way. If you are stuck in the belief that the only success that matters on your health journey is seeing the number on the scale go down each week, all hands in for that's not the way to think. Start taking track of additional health markers, such as being able to go up a flight of stairs without being out of breath, being able to bend down to tie your shoes, or having enough energy to get through the day without needing a nap or refueling with caffeine or sugar. One of my biggest oversights when the number on the scale was the golden standard was failing to recognize that my clothes didn't feel as tight, my IBS was more manageable, and my mood and outlook on life was much better. The number on the scale isn't the only indicator of weight loss success. Sustainable weight loss should feel like a natural lifestyle choice, not a rigid diet or a forced fitness program where you feel like you need to push through. Meals and physical activity should be enjoyable and consistent with your values, lifestyle, and dietary choices. Let's support each other by sharing a mindset shift that has helped you lose weight because weight loss, keeping it off, is a lifelong endeavor that changes as we progress through each stage of life. The more we can adjust to the changes, meet challenges, and overcome difficulties, the more successful you and I will be.